Hey, what's going on there, guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene, and today we're gonna talk about nutrients so you don't mess up your garden. But first, show some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. We're gonna be giving away a whole bunch of Gaia Green amendments next month, so be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for the tips, the monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. Link will be in the description below. And also, don't forget, you wanna come and set with us, check out our grows, and you want to just chill with us, follow us on Instagram. Link to that will also be in the description below. Trust me, you want to follow us on Instagram because our seedlings, I mean, they're sprouting really good, you know what I'm saying? So definitely follow us on IG. Now, today we're going to be talking about something that everyone always seems to fall victim to, and I don't care if you've, you know, you're just starting out or you claim to be growing for a million and a half years, it's called nutrient burn. I've fallen victim to it. I'm sure you guys are all have as well and if you say you haven't fallen victim to nutrient burn you're lying we've all been there and some of us can't seem to get out of it and I'm here to pretty much break down why you should or shouldn't be feeding your plants how you should be feeding your plants and when you should be feeding your plants they're sensitive to a lot of nutrients especially like the bottle nutrients that aren't exactly considered to be slow release now there's a fine line between properly feeding your plants and just going overboard the first thing you got to understand is the difference between between macro and micronutrients. Your macronutrients are your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, NPK for short. That's what you see on the front of each amendment, like you know the bottles, those three numbers that you see, that's what we're talking about here. The higher the number, the higher the concentration of that nutrient. Makes sense, right? But you see, that's not all. That's not where it stops. Your plants need more than just those three nutrients. And that's something that I didn't really know when I first started growing. You know what I'm saying? I thought there was just the NPK and that's it. But you also have your secondary nutrients like your calcium, your magnesium, your sulfur. And calcium is important for cell wall development. Magnesium is huge when it comes to photosynthesis and your plant's metabolism. And sulfur is important for the formation of chlorophyll and the production of enzymes, proteins, and amino acids. That's why everybody and their brother are all about CalMag, but you don't need to get a bottle of CalMag from Botanicare or however else you get your CalMag to get your calcium and magnesium. There are other amendments that you can use to replace the CalMag products. Like if you wanna go organically, you know, you got your Epsom salt that you can use for your magnesium and your sulfur and you can also use either crab meal, bone meal, fish bone meal, or oyster shell to get your calcium intake. So now that we have an understanding of our macronutrients and secondary nutrients, let's talk about the micronutrients. And I'm talking about stuff like copper, iron, boron, and zinc. They're not main nutrients like the macronutrients that we talked about, but they're still just as equally important. And if you don't give your plants micronutrients, you know, they're gonna give you signs of deficiency so just make sure that you're not skimping out on the micronutrients. Also, something else that I really want to point out, not all nutrients and brands are created equal. Different brands use different ratios, so they're not going to be the same. Experiment with products until you figure out what the ratios need to be. Learn your products. I can't stress that enough. You guys got to learn your products. Different brands also use different ingredients, not even just the concentration of the NPK ratios, the nutrient values. So always read the back of your bottles and your boxes, you know, whatever amendments you, you got going on, see what the different ingredients are. You got to learn the product. You know what's going to really help you out though? I'm going to break down my experiences of what your plants need in every cycle, starting with the seedling stage. Now, your seedlings need the bare minimum, but they still need nitrogen a little bit more than everything else. Think about it. You want to start your leaves off on the right foot. They're young and they're trying to grow their first set of leaves. You want them producing chlorophyll to get that nice lush green color. You don't want to start off with your leaves looking all yellow. That's the definition of not starting on the right foot, okay? So make sure you go easy on your seedlings. Just give them a pinch of nitrogen and minimal amounts of everything else. Now the vegetative stage. You want to up everything that you're giving them in the seedling stage, but you still don't want to go buck wild and make sure you're giving them a little bit more nitrogen than anything else. But also keep up with the calcium, keep up with the magnesium and sulfur levels levels of, you know, even the micronutrients. So you're pretty much upping the nutrient intake from the seedling stage, but they're still going to get nitrogen just a little bit more than everything else. So everything is kind of like this in the seedling stage, and then you're pretty much upping everything 
but the nitrogen levels are always staying a little bit higher than everything else is the point I'm trying to make here. Think about it. The key is leaf and branch development. You want to build structure on your plants. And as your plants get bigger and bigger, you're going to slowly increase the nutrient uptake because your roots are stretching out more. So you got a lot more ground to cover. But towards mid veg, you kind of want to start evening out the macro and micronutrients a little bit more. But then the flowering stage happens and it's almost like you're low key reversing a few things. Now you're going to be slowly dropping your nitrogen levels, but you're still going to go hard on the phosphorus and potassium. However, you wanna have more potassium than phosphorus at the start of flower, and the reason for that is because you wanna to start to promote the growth of your flowers and setting the tone, which is why I absolutely love giving my plants a good shot at that banana tea. You guys all remember that video that I made of the banana tea this past summer. I think I think it was like a vlog, but it, I, I ended up showing you guys what I was doing with the banana tea, and I mean, you know, banana tea is a great source of potassium, so. Potassium for the win at this stage of the game. And as you get closer, you know, like week three, four, and five of flower, you want to hit them good with the phosphorus. Think bone meal, think fish bone meal, rock phosphate, seabird guano, think NPK. You want the second number to be the highest. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. That's the second number. That's the number that you want to be the highest. Now here's something a little bit different. I know some of you guys asked me about PPM and I might catch some heat for this, but in soil growing, I've never personally had to factor in PPM and from what people have been telling me about Hydro, I just feel like PPMs are just more important and just makes a lot more sense in Hydro. You know, say what you want, but I've done a good job not factoring in PPMs in my soil grows, but here's the thing though, all right? Before you start going clickety-clack with the keyboard, think about this for a second, all right? If you're worried and you're constantly getting issues with nutrient burn, then maybe, you know what? Maybe you should be checking your PPM. Eventually, once you get a good beat on how much you're supposed to be feeding and you know you have the less is more kind of technique going on, you have that kind of a mindset, PPMs are gonna be just a little bit less important. And the whole point of checking your PPMs is to make sure that you don't go overboard with your feedings. I'm just saying that nutrient burn is not something that I've really had issues with. So reading PPMs to me is kind of like whatever, but whatever works for you, right? In the end, it's all about you guys. It's all about what we all are comfortable with what works for us you know what i'm saying so if you're all about reading ppm so you get that sense of security knowing that you won't be getting any nutrient burn then by all means go for it whatever works for you is just going to work out for you i'm just telling you that factoring in ppms has never really been a thing for me only because i haven't really had issues with nutrient burn like yeah i did have nutrient burn when i started out but then i started you know going half dosage and then i started you know as you start growing you start to kind of have a good sense of how much nutrients how much amendments you should be giving your plants without going overboard with nutrient burn so moving on and make sure that your water ph is up to par okay Keep it around six. Your plants like it slightly acidic. Don't even argue with me on this. Don't be like, oh, well, you know, I like 6.4. Oh, I like 6.4. I like it like this. I like it like that. Guess what? I don't care what you like, okay? How's this for pH? Keep it at 6.0, and if you gotta make adjustments, then just do it. Wanna know why your plants thrive in the wild? It's because rain is slightly acidic. They like it, they love it, and they want some more of it. I know, slight cringe, but I think my message came across loud and abundantly clear clear yeah if your pH is not where it's got to be you can forget about nutrients and everything I just talked about because guess what your plants are already dead anyway so check your pH levels now nutrient burn the oh so famous nutrient burn don't overfeed your plants start half strength and see how your plants react and just go from there nutrient lockout that's another one if your pH is screwed up if you got too much nutrient buildup your plants can't get all the new nutrients that you're giving them so think of them like pipe are pretty much all clogged up, but instead of using Drano, because let me tell you something, that would absolutely suck. Just make sure you're flushing every once in a while and keep your pH straight. Overfeeding with boosters and fertilizers will burn the living crap out of your plants, so don't
won't do it, okay? If you're new at growing, listen up. A lot of these bottled nutrients especially are really highly concentrated, which is why I tell you to go half strength. I'm gonna tell you something that maybe nobody else has ever told you before, unless you already watched a lot of my older videos. These companies do not care about you. They do not care about your plants. They just wanna sell their stuff quicker and keep you buying. Don't keep making these companies rich, all right? Don't overbuy a whole bunch of crap because you're probably not gonna need it. It's like the Fox Farms Dirty Dozen Nutrients. They got an insane amount of nutrients and they keep trying to make it so you buy everything and you don't even need all that crap. So be careful, I'm here to save you guys money. My best growth came from runs where I didn't use much nutrients. I love slow release dry amendments. It gives your plants the perfect diet and kind of just evens things out with your feedings a little bit more. And when it comes to growing, less is more guys. Don't take these videos the wrong way or if I say things the wrong way, I'm here to be entertaining and have fun with you guys and get you guys learning the easiest ways possible to grow here. You know, I'm here to make things fun and interesting and not bore you. That's why I love doing these kind of cuts. But seriously guys, I wanna get you motivated. I wanna keep you motivated and give you a few laughs and pretty much just make your day. That's why we come out with these videos in the morning. I want you guys all to start off on the right foot. I don't want only your plants to start off on the right foot. I want you guys to start off on the right foot. That's why we come out with videos at 9 a.m. Eastern every Tuesday, Friday. Friday and Sunday, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like we covered a good amount of stuff about nutrients and hopefully I gave you a little bit better insight on you know when you're supposed to feed and when you're not supposed to feed, how often you're supposed to feed, you know, stuff like that. Give you a little bit insight about the macronutrients and micronutrients and secondary nutrients and everything nutrients. So before we close off today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon since February. I really appreciate the love and support, guys. So I'm gonna close off today's video be sure to drop a fat thumbs up drop that fat like and subscribe for more content and i will catch you guys in the next one and as always stay safe peace